There are many different ways to machine a casting. I'm not an engineer, I'm a musician, so I machine a casting like a musician. And my common sense tells me that if I make a mandrel that fits down the cord hole in the middle of the casting, then when I put the casting in the forge or chuck, it will be somewhere near accurate alignment. The last thing you want to do is to bore the cylinder to find out that it's not parallel to the general shape of the casting. So with the cylinder casting on the mandrel and the mandrel mounted in the tailstock chuck, move the casting into the jaws of the four jaw chuck. But don't go mad and don't suddenly start tightening everything. Initially just move the jaws towards the casting and then keep working your way around until the jaws just touch the casting. In my workshop I have two lathes. One is a Boxford which is quite a small one and one of them is an old Smart and Brown lathe which is much bigger. So I'm using the Smart and Brown lathe to machine this casting. And the four jaw chuck is much bigger than the one on the Boxford. But the same principles apply. Here I'm using the usual carbide tip tools, which are a lot better. And replaceable tips just make them very easy to use. I find that a nice steady speed, I'm not actually in back gear. On this lathe, this is the slowest speed without using back gear but it's a good speed. There are many different ways to bore a cylinder. This is the way I do it and it seems to work for me. It's a very boring process, please pardon the pun. I even got bored filming this, it's so boring and slow. This is a one inch bore cylinder and I need the bore to be one inch. If it's larger, then I would have a problem, particularly if I was fitting cast iron piston rings that come in set sizes. Here is a top tip to get a good finish on a cylinder bore. After the cutting tool has gone all the way through the work, stop the lathe, reverse the feed so that the cutting tool starts to cut pulling away from the chuck and restart the lathe. This will remove any high points and you do get quite a good finish. And when you get to the outer end of the cylinder, which you originally faced with a facing tool, use the boring tool to reface the front of the cylinder. This way, that does ensure that the cylinder bore and the end of the cylinder are at a perfect right angle to each other. If the end of the cylinder was not at a perfect 90 degrees to the bore, it would not be good at all. When you finish the cylinder and bolted on the cylinder cover, the piston would not go up and down in the cylinder. Not what you want with a steam engine. I made a simple mandrel. The mandrel's diameter is one inch, which fits the bore perfectly. And at one end are two sliding collars and a couple of o-rings. So when you clamp them up the o-rings grip the bore and you can turn it in the lathe. And the whole assembly can be supported by the life centre at the other end. And it takes a very short time to get a perfect 90 degree angle at the other end of the cylinder. Yes of course you have to make the mandrel, it's not a commercial item. But if you're going to make a few one inch cylinders in your lifetime it comes in useful. I do have a few other mandrels like this that I've made for various cylinder jobs. And they do the trick ideally. It takes the chaos factor out of it for me. Setting the cylinder back up in the forge jaw chuck with a dial test indicator seems to me to be like hard work and drives me nuts generally. Apart from which, if the casting moves, all your work so far has gone. So you want to be very careful with that. Perfect engineering is a compromise in the home workshop for most people, myself included. I try and get it as accurate as possible. And it seems to work as most of my steam engines run without knocking or clattering or banging. If you watch some of my other videos, you'll see what I mean. Once this second end of the cylinder has been faced, it needs to be put back in the four jaw chuck to machine the port face. You must use some packings on the newly machined surface, otherwise the chuck jaws will make it look like this. I did this on purpose, this is not an accident. This was a scrap casting, so I quickly machined it to show what happens if you don't use packings. I'm doing this in a milling machine. If you don't have a milling machine, you could use a milling attachment in the lathe, and if you don't have one of those, you could actually use a file for this. But practice filing, which is an art in itself, on some scrap metal first so you get it flat. During the course of this video, I've shown making mandrels, which is part of the tutorial process. And mandrels are very essential in a lot of jobs and make jobs very easy. 
Fittings and jigs are an integral part of model engineering as they're an integral part of full-size engineering. And years ago when I used to read about jigs and fittings, I used to glaze over a little bit. But once you work with them, you realise how important they are. And it's good experience of basic lathe work making simple mandrels. Make a selection, you'll find that they do come in useful. Well, that's just about it for machining a cylinder. Here I'm cleaning the outside of the casting with a needle file. You need to do this really, it's just the moulding flash from the moulding process that you need to remove. It makes a big difference to the finish of the model once it's painted. Again, take your time with it and do not catch the machine surfaces whatever you do. The surface finish of castings varies tremendously. Some are good and some are not so good. If they're really bad, I would say you should be doing this before you start the machining process. Be careful not to remove too much metal, you just need to get rid of the moulding lines. These are Stuart Victoria and I believe Beam Engine and James Coombs cylinders. And the good thing about them is that they have the ports and the steamways cored in already, which saves drilling from the end of the cylinder to the ports, which is not the best job in the world. It still makes me nervous after all these years. But sometimes you can get a casting where the steamways are completely full of black sand. So it's important to remove this, preferably early on before you bore the cylinder, so you don't blunt the boring tool as it travels down the cylinder, but mainly because you can build up the engine and make it so that when you put the steam into the engine or the compressed air it doesn't work because the ports are full of sand. Just use a paper clip and poke it up the ports and you can get rid of all the sand. The next video will cover the drilling process. Thanks for watching and I hope it's been of some use to you.